Hi, Blood Talk fans. Today is another episode of ABO discrepancies. Since I got a few requests from you guys to have another one of ABO discrepancy video, without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, historical type and current types do not match. It's a common knowledge, and I hope you guys know that our blood types do not just change out of the blue. They don't change without a reason. But there are a few conditions that could change our blood types. Take a few minutes to write down those conditions. And what do you do when the current specimen blood types and historical blood type do not match? I'll give you a few moments to list the possibility of what could cause the discrepancy. If you need more times, you can pause the video. Time's up! Let's see if your answer match what I have. Error during the specimen collection process such as mislabeling and mistake during the patient identification process, both errors are in the pre-analytical process. Don't overlook or underestimate the importance of pre-analytical. If it is wrong from the beginning, everything else that follows would be wrong by default. Maybe I'll talk about the data check that laboratory used to help minimize things from falling through the crack in another video. This example shows how important our pabotomists are. It is extremely important to follow the proper specimen collections, positive patients' identifications, and labeling process. The process are there for reasons. I have videos about specimen collections and blood draws to check them out at the end of the video. Mislabeling could happen when the pabotomist preprints patient labels and switch them when labeling the tubes, or print the wrong label. Once the tube is labeled and sent to laboratory, it is really hard for CLS to know if the tube were labeled correctly or not. In some small hospital, blood draws could be tasked for CLS or nurses, so please, please, please be mindful when labeling specimen. The wrong label mean wrong test results, mean misdiagnosed, and the patients may not be treated on time or being treated the right way. The main reasons for mislabeling of wrong blood in the tube is that the collector did not do positive patient identifications. I'll tell you this, for me as a patient when I go to a hospital or get my blood draw for any reasons, I asked to check the tube labels to make sure that they got my name correctly and don't let the collector leave until they label your tube and you read to verify that all the tubes were labeled correctly. I do this every time. If you see part of your names or your birthday cut off on the label, speak up and tell them to print out a new label and label the tube in front of you. You are the best advocate for yourself. Do not rely on somebody else to be your advocate. Next, misidentified patients could be another reason why the current blood types and the historical blood type do not match. There is the right way and the wrong way to practice patient identifications. As a healthcare professional, it is important to practice the correct way and do not even entertain the thought of the existence of the other way. The patient could die within a minute of getting transfusions with incompatible blood type. Keep that in mind. Other pre-analytical problems, accepting another collector draws and labeling it as your own, drawings and saving extra tubes for later use, these actions are unacceptable. Other than the pre-analytical process, what else could cause the mismatch in the patient blood type? Acquired B is a medical condition associated with GI infections in patients with group A blood type. Bacteria inside change the sugar structures on the red blood cells membrane and that caused the patients to be type as B. Keep in mind that the patient blood type is not actually changed to B but it is a temporary condition or a secondary condition caused by GI infections. If you know what bacteria that caused this acquired B, type it in the comment down below. Remember, this is a common test question. If a patient with 
acquire B, require red blood cells transfusions, what blood type would you give? Would you be giving A or B or O R B C? Well, you cannot give B because the patient is not really a B patient and the patient's antibody would lyse the red blood cells and cause an acute transfusion reaction. However, you can give A because the patient really a A blood type patient and group ORBC is a universal donor. Let's think about this a little bit more. How would you know that this patient is an acquired B patient if this is the first time that the patients come to your hospital? One, you will most likely see discrepancy in the forward and reverse blood type. The forward blood types will will as B, while the reverse blood type is A. Second, you should discover during your investigation that the patient is here due to GI infections. And when you find out that the patient is here due to GI infections, that's your clue. Next is a bone marrow transplant patients. We're talking in case that the donor and the recipients has a different blood type. If they have the same blood type, you won't see these issues. After a bone marrow transplant, the recipient will slowly change to the donor blood type. During the transitional period, we could see weird blood type resulting due to the two red blood cell population inside the patient. Think about what blood product type would you give to this patient, whether it will be RBC or plasma products. Leave your answer in the comment down below. Transfusion history. Massive transfusions. Massive transfusion patient is defined as transfused more than 10 units within 24 hours. In this case, the patient's own red blood cells has been replaced by the donor red blood cells. The ABO problems occur when we transfuse out of type during a massive transfusion protocol. The patient's blood types might change from A to O. Sometimes during an emergency, we don't have time to perform type and screen or cross match tests on the patients. To save the patients, we give universal donor blood. Type O RBCs and A low titer or AB for plasma. Recently transfused patients. A patient doesn't have to be massively transfused to have his or her blood type affected by it. It also depends on where and how the blood was collected. If the sample was collected when the blood was being transfused, then you might be collecting the donor instead of the patient blood. All this detail matter, so pay attention to collecting site and what is going on with the patient at the time of collection. Age. The patient age could be another reason why the historicals and the current patient blood type do not match. And elderly patients could have weakened reverse blood type. As we age, our body produces fewer antibody, which cause the reverse blood type to be weakened, sometimes even below detectability. We also see this phenomenon in newborn and premature infants. Newborn may not have fully developed Rh, so the initial type may appear as Rh negative, especially in premature babies. As the baby age, the Rh antigen is more fully developed, and you might get Rh positive later on. We also perform a test called DU or weak D test on Rh negative baby. Another way that you can confirm is by performing molecular tests. Pregnancy history. A pregnant patient has twice as much plasma as a non-pregnant patient. This means the antibody concentrations could be diluted and the reverse type may be weakened. What can you do to troubleshoot this? You could enhance the reverse type by performing co-incubations, extending room temp incubations, or adding more plasma or serums when you're performing the test. That was a lot for just the first example. Could you think of anything else? 
Let me know down below. The video is getting a little bit too long, so I'm cutting it in two parts. I'll see you next time. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change, and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends, and I shall see you all next time. As always, remember your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching.